So I, I think I'm invited as the, 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 the director of the Istanbul Biennale. So I'll um, try to give you some brief information about the uh, Istanbul Biennale, which was established in 1987. And um, it's established by the Istanbul Foundation for Culture and Arts, which is a non-profit and non-governmental organization. Um, and it is uh, also, it's like an umbrella organization which is organizing the film festival, the theater festival, the jazz festival, the classical music festival, and we are, for example, also organizing the pavilion of Turkey at the Venice Biennale. We are organizing the, the, um, the Stedezar residency program in Paris, so we have, um, we have many cultural and artistic events uh, which are happening throughout the year, both in Turkey and abroad. And um, so the first Istanbul Biennale was established when, um, in fact, there was a lot of um, maybe interesting um, artists who were producing uh, really great artworks, but there were not any kind of um, cultural infrastructure in the city. So um, it was very difficult for, for the artists from Turkey to have uh, international uh, connections, and it was also uh, difficult for the audience in Istanbul to, to understand what was really going on in the international scene. And thinking about how uh, maybe more difficult it was, the, the mobility of art students, um, so the Biennial was able to create a, a platform where we would present um, the, um, <clears throat> the diversity of um, uh, artistic production, both in Turkey and also from abroad. And um, the, the, one of the main objectives was also to create a learning, learning space through the biennial, a learning space both for professionals from Turkey and also um, for, for, the, for the audience and for artists. And another um, objective of the Istanbul Biennial was to engage with the city. And um, so in, in all the editions, we, um, we are trying to explore different ways to, to connect uh, with the city and to use the city as a laboratory, as a space for uh, experimentation and uh, so offering the, the city as a, as a space um, to artists to, um, to, to work um, um, from different perspectives. So, um, and the fact that I think the Istanbul Biennial didn't have a permanent location from the beginning, it became more like an advantage. Uh, although, you know, it's very challenging to always to, um, uh, to start from the scratch and to create spaces, um, sometimes using alternative spaces to exhibit art. Um, it has become a really um, a strength of the Istanbul Biennial to work in different spaces in the city. Like we have been using old schools, uh, warehouses, um, hammams, um, some even some hotel rooms, um, the Princess Islands, and so we have been really exploring um, um, alternative and non-institutional uh, spaces to um, to organize the biennial. And um, so, I think it it is from the beginning. It was also. <clears throat> very significant to create this, this space for production of knowledge in contemporary art and also to create a space, a public space. Um, and um, in 2013, for example, we decided to make the biennial free of charge. Uh, so it really um, helped us to increase the number of the visitors. And uh, this year, in 2017, we are organizing the 15th edition of the, uh, of the biennial, so it's the 30th anniversary. And we see how, um, I mean, in the international art world, how the biennial has become a, um, 
an important space where the also the international visitors are coming. If they are coming once, we know that they are going to come back again. So, um, and I think um, the also one of the reasons for this is that we always uh, try to give um, sufficient space and resources to artists to produce also new works. So in the uh, 15th biennial, um, which is happening now, so maybe you will, you know, you will um, decide to come to Istanbul in the next three weeks. Maybe you take the flight with me on Sunday <laughs> to Istanbul and we go there together. You know, why not? Um, it's only 23 hours uh, <laughs> from Istanbul to Santiago, so <laughs> we will have more opportunities to have a chat and to discuss. <laughs> and um, so this time um, um, I invited an artist duo, Angun and Draxe, to curate the biennial. So for each edition, uh, we work with different uh, curators. And Amgren and Draxet um, is an artist duo who have been working together for more than 25 years. And they have also participated in the Istanbul Biennials as artists in 2001, 2011, and 2013. So they, they were very familiar with the art scene in Istanbul and also with the city. So it was, a, uh, it was an important starting point. And, um, so when we organized the first press meeting, um, we announced the title of the biennial uh, with a performance. We invited 40 people to ask questions about who is a good neighbor. Uh, is a good neighbor someone who has a larger family than yours? Is a good neighbor someone who is your friend on social media? Is a good neighbor someone who is coming from a neighboring country? So there were 40 questions who were, uh, which were trying to unfold the discussion about a good neighbor. So basically, the, this edition is talking about the notion of home, neighborhood, living spaces, um, and and maybe one of the main questions was. Uh, how do we live with different identities in, in our societies? Um, um, and I think um, the, 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 what we are you know, trying to do is to, to engage with the political and the social context. Uh, I think it's impossible to do an exhibition responding to, the, to, to our context. And um, this edition has been very challenging um, because of the political situation in Turkey. And um, there was a coup attempt, maybe you heard about it, in uh, 2016, in July. And that was when we were um, doing the research for this edition. And also, there were a lot of uh, terrorist attacks in 2016. So it was a, it was a period where um, many people lost hope um, for the future. And um, so we were discussing how to make a meaningful exhibition when the you know, country is going through um, such a political turmoil. And um, after the coup attempt, I remember um, we had many meetings um, and I introduced the, the curators to not only artists and the uh, art world, but also to political scientists, sociologists, journalists, and opinion leaders in the society to, to talk about uh, what art, uh, how art can play a role um, during, during these moments. And uh, everyone agreed on the fact that art plays um, um, even a more urgent role in this context because um, first of all, it creates a space to, to bring people together. Uh, then it creates a, 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 a maybe a breathing space where you f uh, when you feel you have enough. Um, it's like you know artists are opening up new worlds and um, offering new imagination and um, and we were also trying to find a new language, a new language that art can offer. 
um, because we also try to avoid um, the language of the politicians, the language of the mass media, and we try to, to create a new language, um, maybe um, also trying to give hope to, to people. So um, finally, I mean, it, um, we work with 56 artists for this edition. Uh, coming from again all uh, all over the world, and um, and 30 artists they produce new new works for this edition, responding to the sites also and to this context, and uh, we are also collaborating, you know, with different institutions in the city, Istanbul Modern and the Para Museum, but we are also using uh, again. Um, alternative spaces like uh, an old Greek school, which is not functioning anymore, um, an artist collective studio, a house which was transformed by an artist from Egypt, Mahmoud Halet, a house museum, and, uh, and the hammam where we also organize performances every, every Saturday. And we also um, believe that the public program um, was very significant um, also for this for this biennial, and we invited an artist and an academician Zeno Pekun to work um, with different uh, activist groups, different you know academicians, and not only organizing lecture lectures, panel discussions, talks, but also organizing cooking sessions, jam sessions, and you know picnics or different forms of. Um, bringing people together. And um, now, I mean, uh, we see that there is really a lot of attention from the, from the audience, which is great. So um, maybe we will be arriving to a number of 400,000 visitors. So, um, I mean, it's not about the quantity of the people, but I realize that for many people, also it's the first, um, it's the first time that they experience uh, contemporary art. Uh, for a lot of young people, you know, for students, um, it's, it's, the, it's the first exhibition that they, they see in their lives, and, um, and it kind of raises awareness about what contemporary art is. Um, and for the 30th uh, anniversary, we have been also doing some interviews and collecting some stories from um, previous curators, artists, and also um, visitors. And um, again, once again, you know, many, uh, many of them um, shared with us that the biennial acted as a, as a, as a school. Uh, for them, and once they uh, they work for the biennial, they, then they feel like they can do anything um, in the world, and uh, it's, it's getting maybe um, easier for them um, their for their professional careers uh, to have the experience of working for the biennial, um, and. Maybe I can also give you some information about um, more like the technical, the, the funding structure of the biennial, which can be also um, interesting. Um, because this is a biennial which almost um, doesn't have any public funding. Um, we make applications, we need to make applications um, for each and every edition of the biennial and usually we get only 4 to 5 percent of the total budget. But uh, again, this uh, challenge, I think, um, made us invent new uh, and experimental ways of fundraising. And we were able to um, maybe increase the, the, the total budget of the biennial from 500,000 euros to 3 million euros in the last 10, 15 years. And, um, and we, I mean, we have 
a lot of private uh, sponsors, companies which are supporting the biennial, which is very challenging because it's not easy to find support for contemporary art from private companies, but we have, um, we were able to um, convince um, the main, main funder of the biennial. Um, and we are also collaborating with a lot of international funding institutions and uh, also individuals. So it's a, it's a multi-channeled uh, system. And um, with the IBA, with the International Biennial Association, um, I'm responsible of the programming. And so we are m more interested in um, in discovering how biennials can um, can share their experience and can do projects together. And um, one of the examples um, from the from 2016 is that we initiated um, a staff exchange program with Liverpool Biennial. So the exhibition coordinator of the Istanbul Biennial was in Liverpool for three months to uh, support the installation period. And this year, um, the educational curator of the Liverpool Biennial was in Istanbul also to, to, to support the uh, educational program in Istanbul. And we also initiated the, the bill, international billboard project of the Istanbul Biennial, where you see the, the photographs of Lukas Fassmann, a photographer from Switzerland, and um, the visual, the graphic designer of the Istanbul Biennial, Rupert Smith, um, created these billboard images. And um, this work traveled to 20 cities all around the world, from Sydney to Limerick, uh, from um, Moscow to um, to India, so I think these are, these were also really important examples how um, how to maybe develop more international connections and collaborations and not um, let the isolation um, happen. And so uh, we are also planning to publish a publication of the IBA, also to, to support the critical discourse on biennials, because we know that there are more than 300 biennials all around the world. And um, how, um, how do different structures of biennials function, and what can we learn from each other? Um, so the, the IBA is also trying to create this, this networking activity between biennials. And um, I think it was also important for the IBA to have this meeting in Chile, uh, because we are also thinking of how to um, reach more the Latin American continent. Um, you know, there's Margarita from uh, Havana Biennial, Mercosul Biennial, but we know that um, there are more things to um, to discover, and also it would help us to to learn more about the artistic scenes uh, here, which is very important for the research process uh, uh, of the biennial sighting. Um, so. Thank you very much once again, and um, if you have any questions, I would be happy to, yeah, and to answer. A propósito de, de lo que tú planteabas como una de las funciones de una bienal, que es generar, eh, generar estas preguntas, como particularmente algunas que mencionabas en relación a qué es ser un buen vecino o... Eh, cómo vivir con diferentes identidades, etc. Eh, entiendo también, esto ya es como algo personal, pero que finalmente esta idea de la Bienal como un, como un gran paraguas, como decías tú, también eh, artístico y cultural, eh, me preguntaba de qué manera eh, la Bienal logra digerir o procesar estas preguntas para eventualmente poder también eh, generar ciertas respuestas frente a esas cosas que pregunta. O sea, yo entiendo que las respuestas 
por una parte la generan eh, los artistas o todas eh, eh, las personas que, que conviven desde distintos lugares de la Bienal, pero me imagino también que la Bienal debe tener alguna, eh, voy a decir, responsabilidad eh, en, en también procesar esa, procesar esa información y ser capaz también de generar ciertas respuestas. Y quería saber cómo lo ves tú y quería saber si existen algunas, ustedes han procesado algunas de las respuestas a esas preguntas que tú planteabas también. Thank you. Um, I think the, the, the main idea was not to answer as, uh, to these questions as the biennial. And from the beginning, we were more interested in asking questions and um, letting people um, to answer these questions. And maybe one question which was also important is to ask ourselves, am I a good neighbor? And um, as you said, the biennial um, is based on many personal stories. Uh, personal stories of artists, personal stories of other participants in the biennial. And um, for example, we even initiated <coughs> this collaboration with a newspaper Um, T24, um, and we invited um, every Monday someone to, to write about a good neighbor. So there were um, even psychoanalysis or geographies, you know, of, I mean, people from coming from different disciplines, authors, poets, um, who were writing about a good neighbor. Um, also with the, um, I mean, Also, I think with the participating artists, you would, um, I mean, you would have a feeling how um, how artists um, responded to these questions in in different ways. Some of them were talking about, for example, their families, their living spaces, but some of them responded to these questions in a more macro level. Uh, and we, we really believe that this question became even more relevant um, after Brexit, for example, or you know, after the elections in the US, and when um, you know, the, the decision or when, the, when this um, crazy suggestion of um, building a wall between US and Mexico appeared. So, And also, with, I mean, within the context of Turkey, um, now we are having problems with almost all the neighboring countries. And um, so I think it was, um, we, we felt like it was more important to let people uh, coming up with their own, own ideas and own suggestions uh, instead of, you know, Um, trying to give uh, give an answer to this the, to this question, we thought that it was more important let people and let artists speak about a good neighbor. <laughs> 